It's like rock stars became the new really holy um, worship of, of our holy worship, right? So the whole, everything has changed so much. Yeah. So instead he went with Bitcoin and it's working so far. I think it'll work. I think, I think we'll be, I think it'll save us. Right. So uh, how did banning <laughs> P2P file swapping in the music industry work? Mm, didn't never. <laughs> right. So it's a P2P file swapping of value or digital gold or Bitcoin. So you can't, you can't ban it. So that's it. They, I mean, how many times has China banned it? I think they've banned it at least 10 times. It makes, it doesn't stop it. India's banned it. Nigeria it, just Nigeria. banned it. Look, look what happened to uh, usage Bitcoin went usage. Went right up. Went straight down. up. Yeah. Again, oh. you invite, the, the, as Stacey points out, the protocol, the game theory invites attacks. So it wants to attack, it wants to invite the bans. It wants to uh, invite the central bank, uh, you know, attacking it because all this does is increase the hash rate, which in turn increases the security, which increases the price. Yeah. So the more you attack it, the higher it goes. And therefore the more improbable it becomes that you can attack it. Eventually it'll, everyone will capitulate. The only thing about Bitcoin is you get the price you deserve. So Paul Krigman, he'll end up buying Bitcoin when it's at a million, because that's the price he deserves. He didn't deserve it at a dollar. You know, the central bank of India will be buying it at $500,000 a coin. They don't deserve it at 40, 50, $60,000 a coin. They don't deserve it. They don't have the moral character for it. So you get what you deserve. That's the Satoshi way. I think it's God, right? You know, Crazy. if you were God and you created the, the universe and so one of your favorite creations was earth and the people on earth, and you noticed that they were about to become extinct because they were too fucking stupid. How would you fix the problem? Well, you could just show up like in a Jesus Christ figure, but the shock could be too great and people might just die from shock. So you have to kind of reverse engineer your creation and figure out how to hack into our global unconscious. So you put the pebbles out there for the cypherpunks to find. And then in 2000s and 2008 and 2009, they picked it up and they found it because Bitcoin is a discovery, not a creation. And they're like, wow, this is actually perfect money. And so now we have perfect money and the human extinction now is not a dead certainty anymore. It's now become a question mark. And we're trying to reverse the tide of human extinction back to where humans will be sustainable for a longer period of time with perfect money. You know, and this energy FUD that people talk about, the energy that's used by Bitcoin, once we get to a Bitcoin standard, that 160,000 uh, terawatts of energy that's used globally right now gets cut in half immediately because you get rid of the, the defense industry, you get rid of war, you get rid of hatred, you get rid of all the mechanisms required to verify. You know, we have thousands, hundreds of thousands of lawyers and accountants that all their job is to verify transactions, verify court records, you know, go through the bureaucracy. Well, with Bitcoin, the transaction is the verification. It's all transparent. It's all immutable. It's all visible. You don't need any of that. So the energy usage on planet Earth gets cut in half immediately, which is part of our God's hope that we continue. You know, God's clearly like, oh, my God, you fucking idiots. I can't believe you. You're going to blow yourselves up like this. And so he, uh, like the breadcrumbs were laid out and the cypherpunks found them. And now I think we're back on a path, back on sustainability path. Yeah, Bitcoin is Christ 2.0. I had one of my Twitter accounts is BitChrist. <laughs> and I've had that up since 2013. And I've, you know, been tweeting as BitChrist since 2013. I checked his some, <laughs> Yeah, some different ideas about this, that Bitcoin is essentially BitChrist. Bit did Christ 2.0, but you couldn't do Christ again because, you know, that was uh, great for what 2,000 years ago. At that time, you could do like, oh, you know, a Christ type thing where walking on water and all these types of things, curing the lepers. It like it had huge impact 2,000 years ago. But we live in a di digital world now. We live in a different world. It's 2,000 years later. So God's yeah, like, I'm really, I can't yeah. do the Christ thing. That's not going to work this time because yeah, they, they would freak already, out. They would freak they, out. They would freak out. Plus, yeah. you've had so many imitators over the years like 
Jim Morrison or the rock and roll stars, like rock stars became the new really holy um, worship of, of our holy worship, right? So the whole, everything has changed so much. Yeah. So instead he went with Bitcoin and it's working so far. I think it'll work. I think, I think we'll be, I think it'll save us. Well, actually I was thinking and uh, something I want to now cover on Orange Pill podcast because of what I was listening to your conversation. And I realized that there is like a God that plays charades or charades with us. I think that's what, uh, how you can reconcile that notion of intelligent design versus science. So when you see uh, like the Cambrian explosion, right? What you see are all these fossils with creatures with six arms or seven arms or five yeah. heads, you know, and it was like, and then beauty happened. The perfection, asymmetrical, you know, symmetrical humans, like down, down the spine, like uh, mammals and creatures, every, we all have the same similar uh, design because it was a perfect design. And I think the same thing sort of happened with, with what happened with Bitcoin. It was birthed in the same sort of ugly uh, creations that happened. And uh, like now looking back on the early coins, starting from the mid 80s that you had these cypherpunks creating yeah. these coins and cryptographers creating these coins and it was like um i think in a way you could say like god's playing charades with us like no like okay give it arms give it arms and we're like like this and we draw it with like seven arms no 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 you'll recognize it when you see it when it's ready you'll see it and then it that happened with bitcoin it just instantly somebody like Hal Finney who had already been working on all these coins and understood and was a, a, like a mind that could un already understood the cypherpunk way he instantly got it like <laughs> January of 2009 he was talking about million dollar Bitcoin so yeah, uh, it. that's a he's like an apostle right like he's somebody right there with Jesus who knows who understands like okay I understand the miracle that this is Whereas like everybody else, we're all sinners, like trying to get to that space, trying to get to the enlightenment, trying to understand Bitcoin. We come for, for speculation. We come for, for the free, you know, if, if Christ is like giving everybody free loaves of bread and fish, everybody's like, hey, I, I want some free food. Yeah, as Christ was airdropping loaves of bread. <laughs> but they, they come there for the magic tricks and the magic tricks with this magic internet money is like number go up and they come there for that, but they stay for the enlightenment, the, the inner peace that comes. The revolution so who is the evil side is it the central banks is it elon musk shitcoins ethereum oh well, central banks clearly are the the um the evil that's okay. plaguing the world 